I'm looking at the images of hundreds of long-finned pilot whales stranded on the sandbanks and washed up against the shores of uh, Macquarie Harbour in Tasmania. Despite the fact that I'm looking at this through the internet, I feel a deep sense of unease. I'm reminded of the phrase, the deformation of the Anthropocene, something that I'd rather have as a scientific concept than an observed reality. But here it is in front of me, on my screen, mass dying of wildlife today. The Anthropocene Epoch is the era in which humans are the main drivers of change in the environment and climate. I empathise with the suffering of the whales, as I know what it is to be an air-breathing mammal. And I empathise with the suffering of the people who helped the whales, because I'm 2,000 kilometres distant, viewing the event through the internet, and even I feel distressed. And I recognise the depth of my ignorance about these things. So I've been researching, watching, reading, listening, seeking knowledge about long-finned pilot whales. And I'm reminded that I've actually met pilot whales like these on my adventures on commercial fishing boats, tuna longliners off the coast of East Australia. I remember now, standing on the bow, I saw a pod of pilot whales, their bulbous heads rising above the surface in the distance between the waves. Pilot whales, you see, like to eat hooked tuna, an annoyance for fishermen, particularly the skipper, who is the boss of all things on a fishing boat. Fifty miles east of Fraser Island, I watched a 23-year-old skipper aim a 22 caliber rifle at a pod of pilot whales. And to this day, I wonder why I didn't call him to account. Why didn't I lower his rifle to raise his awareness? You see, the worst natural disaster of all is human inaction in the face of crisis. The solution is to take action advised by a simple but well thought through plan. What happened in Macquarie Harbour was a natural event. Whales strand, dolphins strand, and in particular, pilot whales strand. Nature is cruel. Everything that is born dies, no exceptions. This tragedy was extraordinary for its scale and the beauty and remoteness of the location. Remote, that is, for the people watching the tragedy from the internet or the TV, myself included. But it was not remote for the people who lived close by, the people who experienced it, the people who saw it, heard it, felt it, sensed it. It was not remote for the people who were there. For those folk, it was not an incident that could be turned off by changing channel or browsing a different web page. And for those people, there is a danger. Something happened and a story was formed about that thing. The danger is that the experience becomes an enduring story, a bad story. For some people, the story will grind against them forever. I should have pushed harder. I should have got there sooner. I should have prepared for this day. It was my fault. But it wasn't your fault. It was a natural tragedy. It was nature's fault. Gregarious whales, a narrow channel, vast harbour, sandbanks, weather driven tide. It was an accident waiting to happen. You helped make it better. Dozens of pilot whales are back in the ocean because of you. Hold this thought for a moment and maybe realign your story one more time. In some ways, this natural and yet tragic event is an exception to the rule. The Anthropocene Rule. The Anthropocene Rule is that when there is a mass death of animals, plants or ecosystems, there is normally the fingerprint, that make that the boot mark, of the human race. The deformation of the Anthropocene is described in detail in the recent Living Planet report that says nature has reduced more than 65% since the pop band Beatles put their music out in the 1970s. A commentator recently suggested that the report really ought to be named the Dying Planet Report. Much of the mass killing of nature is to do with the destruction of natural habitat to be replaced with farmland and cities for human habitat. Another factor is that the climate is changing because we humans have yet to square up to and euthanize the fossil fuel industry. 
If climate change were a truck travelling at high speed, then nature is the rabbit stunned into inaction by the headlights. If by chance the rabbit escapes, where would it go? Its habit has been consumed by the humans. The 2018 science paper titled Transitions of the Earth System in the Anthropocene says that when global temperatures rise 1 to 2 degrees above where they ought to be, nature triggers a cascade of climate tipping points, driving global average temperatures 6 degrees higher. That's the equivalent to a rerun of the Permian extinction, a mass extinction event called the Great Dying. 90% of nature was wiped out 253 million years ago because of the mass release of greenhouse gases. Through the fossil fuel industry, humans are doing the same thing, albeit 100 times faster. Unless we change course, it's lights out at 11 for nature, with the mammals, including the humans and the pilot whales, in the first tranche of extinctions. And we're already more than one degree above baseline. We are in a climate and ecological emergency. An existential mass extinction event is unfolding before our eyes. Our civilization is out of time. Our biosphere is dying. Verb, action statement, ongoing. If the human race fails to transform its relationship to nature, that verb will be replaced with an adjective, extinct. Our biosphere is extinct. Not yet, but it's coming. Absent a peaceful revolution of ideas and action from a core of highly committed people. You have spent days wading through a harbour full of dying whales. Never let a tragedy of nature go to waste. You need to use this tragedy to light a fire in your belly. Let this tragedy switch on the light inside you. Let this tragedy be the jolt that wakes you up, that helps you break through the barrier to become a warrior for change. The world needs an army of environmental warriors driven by a spiritual connection to nature. The events of Macquarie Harbour can be a spark to set off a new environmental revolution, this one driven by spirituality. We stand against those who harm nature not for reason, but because it is right. Now that you have arisen, what to do? By mid-century, we need to euthanize the fossil fuel industry. Regrow nature. Draw down three trillion tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. Restore the climate to 300 parts per million CO2 by 2050. And develop the means to thrive in synergy with nature deep into the long future. This is what we must do if we are to stay on this planet and help the pilot whales off the sandbanks. Maybe this is why Vitae Planeta birthed us. I say Vitae Planeta because I am Vitan. I could just as well say uh, Gaia or Mother Nature or Pashamama or the Living Planet. These are all the same idea. We humans are no different to the whales. We are as much a part of nature as they are. Sure, humans have free will, but the pilot whales have echolocation. We all have different talents, you see. To help the pilot whales of the sandbank, maybe this is why we are here. Think about this. We all came from the ocean, really. The amniotic fluid, the liquid in which the human fetus gestates, the liquid in which you spent your days before your birth, has nearly identical chemical composition as ocean water. It's the same for our blood. Human blood and seawater are nearly identical. When you rescued the whales, you weren't rescuing an abstract part of the environment. You were rescuing blood brothers and blood sisters, blood relatives. You were rescuing family. You were rescuing yourself. How about this for an idea? Instead of a world where we were forced to euthanize stranded whales, how about we euthanize the fossil fuel industry? It probably needs to be nationalized so that it can be wound up in an orderly fashion without massive job losses and political interference. We need to draw down three trillion tons of CO2 from the atmosphere so that we don't keep cooking the planet. We need climate restoration, returning the atmospheric CO2 to 300 parts per million by 2050 by regrowing nature and using nature as a guide for drawdown technology.
Nature is, after all, made of carbon-based life forms. When we grow nature, we move carbon from the atmosphere and into the global ecosystem. Finally, we need to develop the systems, practices and technology that will allow us to live in balance with nature deep into the long future. It's that simple. We need to nurture the fire inside, the rage, the compassion and the love and be the agent that drives change. The transformation of human civilization to advance the verdant age. The time to start is now. Pilot whales are odd and adorable. Not a creature that would make a good pet. We don't really think about them much until they wash up on the sandbank, dying. Beautiful, yes. Noble, yes. Perfect, not so much. They have a flaw. They tend to strand a lot. Why is this? Well, I'm not the expert. The marine scientists are the experts. But what I understand is that pilot whales typically live in the open ocean and they're very gregarious. So imagine a situation where, for whatever reason, one of the members comes into a shallow bay and their echolocation system is unsuitable to navigate. And it plows into a sandbank and gets stuck. It calls out in distress to its pod. And the pod responds by swimming in and similarly getting stuck. Observing this behavior, you might think that the pilot whales are a bit dim or maybe they just need to take five and think about what they are doing before they swim into a massive shallow harbor with a barometric tide and only one tiny bolt hole back to the ocean called, of all names, Hell's Gate. I mean, really, what were they thinking? Maybe the much vaunted cetacean intelligence is somewhat overrated. But don't smirk about the pilot whales before you take a look at human behavior. We nuke each other. We toxify our cities with the carcinogenic combustion products of fossil fuels. We war against each other, inevitably killing many more innocents than combatants. We allow the fossil fuel industry to corrupt our democratic systems of governance. We let them get away with it. Sure, humans are a bit mixed up, but look at the noble efforts we deploy to help the shortcoming of the pilot whales. And here's an idea. Maybe while we are helping the pilot whales, other species are taking pity on us and doing what they can to help. Maybe when the bug flies onto your car windscreen, it is sending a message trying to warn us of what we have set in motion. Maybe when the magpie swoops you, it's trying to say, you're driving another mass extinction event and it's completely unnecessary. Maybe when a mosquito or midge or sandfly bites you, that is Vide Planeta's way of saying, Wake up, humans. The biosphere is dying. Transform your civilization and advance the verdant age. We're all relying on you. I suspect that we humans are so swept up in our species exceptionalism that we can't see that nature is trying to help us survive. Nature is sending us messages all the time. Wake up. Transform your civilization. Because in the Anthropocene epoch, humans decide which species live or die. Indeed, we decide whether species continue to exist on Earth. But we're not all bad. Obviously, look at what has taken place in Macquarie Harbour recently. Let us assume for a moment that humans weren't put on Earth to destroy nature, but to occasionally step in when it lost its way. Maybe the Earth is better off with us. Maybe this is why humans evolved, to help pilot whales when they got in trouble. Maybe this is the answer to the age-old question, why are we here? to help the pilot whales when they lose their way. These are existential questions, questions of spirituality. I don't know about you, but if I had to toss up between a spirituality devoted to consumerism and pop culture, as is the norm, and a spirituality grounded in the commitment to protect nature, the machinery of our own life support system, I would take my Reeboks to the recycle bin today. Not that I have reboxed, nor that they're going to get recycled anyway. But you see my point. All humans need to have a nature-based spirituality and act accordingly. Our planet is dying, and you have just experienced that. Our planet needn't be dying. We need to transform civilization immediately. Euthanize the fossil fuel industry. Regrow nature to draw down 3 trillion tonnes of carbon and restore the climate to 300 ppm CO2 by 2050. We need to develop the tools to thrive in synergy with nature 
deep into the long future oh, and keep a wary eye out for pilot whales along the way. <laughs>